things. So I was doing my research and I found out you have kind of an eclectic background. You started as a high school hockey player, became a musician, you go into poker, professional poker, have two best-selling books, and then you go into derivatives trading, data scientist, and now you're the vice president of hockey strategy and intelligence at the Florida Panthers. What did 12-year-old Sonny want to be when he grew up? Um, that's a really good question. I would say maybe some cross between, well, I would say probably early on a hockey player, but those dreams were, were dashed pretty quickly. Um, you know, I did play in, in high school, but you know, I was a hundred and nothing pounds. So it, it, the, the chances were slim. So I don't know, maybe a hockey general manager. Uh, and I would say that that was like half of me and the other half of me was maybe like rock star or, you know, something, something in music. So how did you get your start with the game? When did that love affair start? Pretty early on, uh, you know, seven, eight years old. It was, it was an interesting situation in that, you know, you and I were talking about this bef before the interview that my uh, parents were both not born in America. And so my mom, who was born in India, uh, I, you know, my, my sister and I were both born in the States and I grew up in New Jersey. And, you know, I, I don't know this for sure, but I, I would bet that my mom probably had, had never even really like seen ice before, um, you know, like in terms of seeing a, a rink or, or anything like that. But there we were in, in New Jersey, you know, I was seven, eight years old and I think you know, when my when my dad was at work, she needed something for us to to do, like something to, to take us to do. And so she used to take us to the ice rink in Totowa, New Jersey. And uh, this was like, you know, early 80s. So professional hockey in New Jersey was not that popular then. And so in that rink or in, you know, in that ice facility, there were two rinks. One was like they had the free skate and then the other side, the New Jersey Devils practiced. And so I mean, I swear, I think at that time there were more people at the free skate than there were watching the Devils practice in, in 1982 or 83 or whenever this was. So um, I used to just sit there day after day and watch watch the Devils practice. And uh, that was that was, I guess, the start start of the love affair with hockey. What does a day in the life of the vice president of hockey strategy and intelligence look like? It's it's pretty cyclical is how I describe it. It's, it's pretty dependent on the season, I would say. Um, you know, for example, I I started not long after Bill Zito was hired. You know, Bill, Bill Zito was hired and then hired me not long after that, maybe a, a week or two. And, you know, he kind of hired me and said, all right, get your ass to Florida because we've got two weeks until the draft. And so, you know, during that time and, and not just this year but also during my time with the devils you know kind of leading up to the draft it's it's all focused on amateur player evaluation and um, strategic aspects related to the draft probabilities and, and things of that nature and then you know pretty soon after that's done it's jumping right into free agency and all the the both the player evaluation and again our sort of strategic roster decisions based around that and um you know that usually tends to carry in, into the off season until that's done and then around this time of year you know training camp and early part of the season a lot of it is is dialogue with the coaches and and evaluation of our own team and, and talking through uh and analyzing sort of what what we're doing well uh our own roster our own lines our own players and, and things of that nature and then you know the cycle kind of just continues i'm you know before trade deadline there'll be a lot of focus on on that and then you know it starts all starts all over again so it's you know that's part of what makes it interesting also for me is that it it really depends on kind of the cycle of the hockey season what's your favorite part of the job man it's a tough question all of it yeah i don't know if i have one favorite part of it Probably the the realizing of the the kind of the fruition of, of everything coming together when we make decisions. I mean, I think that's largely what I'm, you know, sort of my role is is helping helping Bill make decisions, helping the team make good decisions, and I think um, the satisfaction of 
us making a good decision to me is is gratifying i guess you know and that's almost it kind of irrespective of whether i mean there's a lot of randomness and and luck in terms of whether those decisions always work out it's better if they do but i, I wouldn't say all the satisfaction is necessarily tied into whether it, it works out or not you're credited uh, with pioneering the first, uh, I guess you can call it, the full-time analytics department in the NHL. How did this all come into fruition? So, as you mentioned, you know, I was a professional poker player for seven years, and I had always, you know, as we talked about growing up playing hockey, hockey was, was kind of always my sport. And I think around that time that I was playing poker, there was a big overlap between kind of the money ball revolution and analytics and baseball and things of that nature. And it, it was, you know, kind of an obvious step for me personally to start applying that sort of probabilistic thinking and reasoning to hockey. And uh, as luck would have it, you know, I found the, the six or seven people in, on the internet back in 2006 that were interested in that sort of thing. And we, you know, we kind of had some dialogue on blogs and things things of that nature but you know most of it was stuff i was doing on my own but um basically a gentleman named matt holsizer uh who's a owner of a hedge fund that traded derivatives equity options he was a d3 hockey player and he was interested in buying a hockey team and he reached out to me kind of cold out of the blue and had read some of our stuff and asked me if i wanted to consult for the then phoenix coyotes and so uh, I did that. It was it was awesome. It was really exciting. It was great. That was kind of the first foray for me into the NHL side. That was around, I guess, 2010. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up going to work for Matt as a derivatives trader, as you mentioned, for a couple of years in Chicago. And I guess during that time, the Devils were purchased by also, you know, fairly young and uh, numerically savvy quantitatively savvy uh finance guys in josh blit uh, sorry josh harris and david blitzer and so it was their you know idea to start a full-time analytics department for the devils and uh they had i guess heard about me through the grapevine and reached out and you know i interviewed and got the job so hockey is a known to be the most diverse sport and i think more than ever it's been under the microscope in terms of the lack of inclusion. Um, more initiatives are taking place, but with your experience as a person of color, what more do you think can be done to make the game more welcoming, not only in the stands, but also in the press box, behind the bench? I think opportunity is really the big thing for me. You know, I guess, I don't know, I tend to look at these things like a lot of things from an analytical point of view, a, a statistical point of view. And so to me personally, you know, is, it isn't necessarily my belief that all results need to be equal or something like that. To me, it's the opportunities that need to be equal. You know, I mean, people have choices. If, you know, a person of any uh, race or ethnicity or gender doesn't want to be in a certain um, area, there might naturally be stratification in, in results. I, I, you know, I don't necessarily take take issue with that for me um you know the issue becomes about opportunity and so does does everybody have the same opportunity to you know go and follow the paths that they want i think clearly the answer to that is is no not everybody does have the same opportunity but um i don't know for me that framing the question in in that way i think is in you know kind of my take on it well, just on that note of opportunities, I do player profiles here on Hockey Night and Jambi where I go interview younger kids and ask them, you know, what do they want to do? And half the time the answer is, I want to be in the NHL. So what advice would you have for anybody looking for a career in hockey, you know, that may not be as a player? I will answer this by saying this. I, so when I was a musician, I, I had a really good friend who was a drummer. And I remember him telling me a story one time about the first, he was at some conference or a seminar or something, and he got the opportunity to speak to Quincy Jones. And he asked Quincy Jones a similar question from a musical standpoint of like, hey, you know, how do I, how do I like get big as a drummer? Like, how do I, how do I make it as a, as a drummer? 
And Quincy Jones looked at him and said, just get really, really good. And uh, I, I feel like that's kind of my answer in terms of, you know, as we kind of talked about, like it takes opportunity, it takes luck, it takes a lot of good timing and it takes all those things. But, you know, from my perspective, those are, those are things you can't really control. Um, you know, you can do your best to put yourself in good situations in, in those aspects, but the thing you, you absolutely can control is your own skill set, for the most part anyway. I mean, there's there's randomness involved there too in luck, but, you know, for the most part, the thing that you can focus on is what you can control, which is your own skill set, your own, you know, doing the right things depending on what, what it is that you're after um, and focusing on those.